And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers here as we are each and every week meeting interesting people and talking about topical issues. And this time we're welcoming back an old friend and an old guest. Uh, not an old guest, but an old friend yes. and, a, and a frequent guest, Tom Price. Yes, Tom Price uh, from Chesapeake Energy is going to be with us today to talk about what's going on not only at Chesapeake, because there's always a lot going on there, uh, both uh, in the business sector but also in the community sector. But also, uh, what is uh, Tom's take on some of the issues that are affecting Oklahomans, such as uh, immigration, the uh, economy, and the like. Uh, he's got uh, some ideas that I think our viewers will appreciate hearing. Tom Price with Chesapeake, coming up next on The Verdict. In driving rain, blistering heat, and bitter cold, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, Chesapeake drills non-stop for natural gas on American soil. Chesapeake drills more new gas wells than anyone else, and from those wells collects the most drilling information and acquires more 3D seismic images, leveraging every efficiency to improve the odds of finding more natural gas every day with every well we drill. The better job we do of discovering bigger reserves of clean, burning American natural gas, the greater the prosperity of our nearby communities, our state, and our nation. And as long as there are more gas reserves to be found here in the U.S., we will never rest. Chesapeake. Natural gas wins the day. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Uh, today we're really pleased to welcome back uh, Tom Price, the uh, Senior Vice President for Corporate Development at Chesapeake Energy. Uh, Tom is a graduate of University of Central Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma, and the American Graduate School of uh, International Management. He's been with Chesapeake from the very beginning of Chesapeake's uh, formation. He was one of the original nine, I think it was, uh, that uh, was there when the doors opened. He has a membership uh, on boards in, in the industry, many different boards and agencies that operate within the oil and gas industry. And he's been involved in the oil and gas industry for uh, 20 plus years. Uh, welcome back, Tom. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Glad to have you. There's a general perception in the state that Chesapeake is still doing well. Is, is that accurate? I think it is. Um, Chesapeake is still the most active um, natural gas um, explorer in the state. We've got about 45 rigs active. Um, that's about 20 to 25 percent of all the rigs that are being utilized in the state right now. We're the most active in the United States um, by a factor of two. We've got about 145 rigs active in the state. So um, when we say that there's natural gas out there and natural gas is the best and cleanest burning fuel, um, we are at the forefront of finding it and um, producing it and delivering it um, to Americans. And um, it's just, it's a real exciting time for this industry, an exciting time for Oklahoma. And business is still growing? It, it, it is, it is. Um, uh, we do some things to protect um, when, to protect our cash flows when prices uh, are declining as they have been of late. Um, and so we have uh, really a pretty much steady state kind of capital budget um, and we'll be the most active operator in the country again in 2008. Job creation? Job creation is just, um, is just amazing. Um, we um, started out, as Kent mentioned earlier, with nine. We're at about uh, 6,300 employees now, about um, 
uh, roughly 3,000 are in Oklahoma. Uh, we hire about roughly 30 to 45 people a month. Um, so we're putting a lot of people to work in extraordinary jobs. One thing I might mention, there was an article in the paper this past week, um, and that is that um, our drilling subsidiary, NOMAC, um, had uh, reached out to um, the ex-convict pool. You know, there's people that have made mistakes in their lives, um, but we don't think that you have to pay for it forever. Um, we give them opportunities um, to uh, become a part of the Chesapeake team, uh, work on our rigs, and uh, get their lives back in order. So we're going to be um, talking about that in more detail with leaders in the city um, over, the next, uh, over the next few months. Uh, Tom, I'm interested in what Chesapeake's impact is. In <clears throat> we know we're going to talk about Oklahoma City here in a minute. Right. But, but beyond Oklahoma City in smaller communities where you are doing a good bit of exploration, I suspect your being there does have a significant impact on the economy of that small community. Yeah, it really does. And, and of course, we've done some um, investigation into that because it's important if we're going to work with our legislators um, across the state that they have some idea of um, just what we do to improve the quality of life in their communities. And um, it's really astonishing. We have um, an impact in every one of the 77 counties that we have here in Oklahoma in terms of royalty interest uh, dispersals. Um, and it, of course, we hire people from all over the state that then work on rigs in a certain uh, part of the state where we're active. So um, we think it's important as a corporate leader to be a community leader as well. And that's really one of the aspects, I think, of what Chesapeake does that maybe separates us apart from others who are not as committed um, to having a as broad an impact as we hope to. Well, <clears throat> it's pretty clear that it's from a uh, sheer raw, raw dollars standpoint, Chesapeake brings dollars into communities around the state and around the, this country. Yeah. Uh, but you do more than that. You're involved in community activities uh, significantly, uh, both in Oklahoma City and around the state and probably beyond. Can you fill us in on what's going on in that regard? Yeah, I can. Um, you know, one of the things that, um, uh, you know, if I can mention it on, on this, uh, this um, station, you and I are working together. You know, lawyers for children. Um, child advocacy is one of the things that is the most important that any of us could have. Um, I think there is a um, sense, um, a disconnect, if you will, with a lot of people that they just think that um, everyone has the same type of childhood and it's just about um, being focused on your education and being disciplined. Um, you know, we have a, a relationship um, with uh, the Regional Food Bank. We're starting a program called Food for Kids. There's some children that when they leave their schools on Friday afternoon don't have another meal until they come back to school on Monday morning. I mean, you know, it's impossible to learn. It's impossible to grow up in a normal fashion when one's having to deal with that kind of adversity. So um, we can't be leaders at Chesapeake um, in just the arena of job growth. We've got to shine a light on certain issues that need everyone's attention. And, you know, if for those that have been successful, there is nothing more important than trying to help others share in that success that we've enjoyed, that has helped us with our self-confidence, our self-esteem, because at the root of any success is self-esteem. Hmm. What, what's the business model for the industry? How, what do you think there? Well, um, I think that, uh, you know, for a long time it's been called the oil and gas industry. In fact, that's an inaccurate uh, representation of our industry today. It's the natural gas and oil industry. Natural gas accounts for about 80 percent of the product that we produce here in Oklahoma. Um, you know, oil prices are high. At 90 to 100 dollars, um, oil prices are completely 
uh, disconnected from where gas sells. Um, on a BTU equivalent, energy producing equivalent basis, um, oil should sell at about six times that of natural gas. Today with, uh, with oil at $90, um, gas at about six, you know, there's a huge disconnect there. That's, you know, 13 times um, what, uh, what gas sells for. So people are getting a great bargain with Oklahoma natural gas. And believe it or not, although um, a lot of people have said there's not any more out there, um, we're finding that that's um, absolutely incorrect. You just have to drill for this stuff. Um, people, it's the people that are saying there's not any out there um, that are the ones that aren't drilling for it. Um, we know it's there and we're finding it. Great. Hey, more to come from Tom Price of Chesapeake Energy right after this. You're watching The Verdict. All children deserve a life of hope and love. But sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this <laughs> land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers and our guest this week, Tom Price with Chesapeake Energy. Kent? Well, I want to focus in on something that I have some um, uh, experience with in dealing with Chesapeake, and that is uh, Chesapeake's not only uh, generous with their funds, but their, their people like to get involved, <coughs> pardon me, in uh, community activities. Can you tell us about that? Sure, sure. We've, we've got a saying at our, um, at our company that leadership matters. And that is that um, anything that is worth doing has got to have people that step up and say, I'll do it. Um, and what we, what we have in a lot of communities in, um, in Oklahoma is um, the, the jobs that they have are sometimes um, at a distance from where they live. And so it, it, it's difficult to get groups of people together um, because people are, are living at such great distances to where they work. So we, we really don't ask our people. We just um, expect, really, our people to get engaged to try and help the communities in which um, we live and work. And I can really say that the passion that Chesapeake people bring to their jobs and really just live in their lives is one that I think um, Aubrey and I and all of us at Chesapeake are enormously proud of because it takes, um, it takes a lot of engagement um, for us to be successful in improving these communities. They, they need a lot of work, they need money, but mostly they need drive and leadership. 
last year the state legislature and the governor signed a immigration law bill and it's now in effect. What's your take on, on the effects to businesses in, in, the, in the state of Oklahoma? Oh, um, y y you know, um, I think there are a lot of others that are better served to talk about the impact on businesses. Um, let me just say, if I could, uh, my concern is on people. Um, I, I just think, as Oklahomans, um, you know, you always hear people saying that they've come to Oklahoma and they've met Oklahomans and how impressed they are with our friendliness and our, um, our willingness to engage. Um, I just think that uh, there are issues out there that people are very concerned about as far as the immigration issue. Um, and I'll say that um, I thank Randy Terrell for bringing this subject to our attention um, because now we're in a position um, where we have to do something. Um, something has to be done because this will take effect for everyone um, in July of 2008. Um, I just think that it's not the best bill. It's a bill, it's a law. But is it our most creative? Is it our most humane? Is it our most sensitive? Um, I think not. And um, I, I think that um, it is very difficult for me. I can tell you, as, as I went through the Christmas period, and I thought, here I am living a life that is, um, I'm free to do anything that I want. And at the same time, there were people that I know were afraid to even come out of their homes. The fact that that young person died because the parents were so afraid of bringing the child out and taking them to the hospital, I mean, that's, that's not Oklahomans. That's not any of us. And no matter how you feel about the legality or the illegality, I think all of us should share the fact that we share a 2,000 mile border with this country. You know, we're fighting in Iraq a people trying to say to them, democracy is a better approach. Here, let us show you, let us show you the way. But here we are in Oklahoma saying, get back across not, not get back into wherever you might have come from in Central America, but just get out of our state. We don't care where you go, just get out of here. I mean, that just, to me, and I've lived in Oklahoma since I was three years old, um, so that just doesn't seem to me like a, an Oklahoma approach to a problem. Do you <clears throat> expect some changes to be offered in the legislative session? Um, oh, I know there will be. Um, there'll be some changes offered, but it won't be done in a contentious fashion. I think that there are people on both sides that want to, uh, that want to try to address this problem. You know, sometimes you have to lay a gun up on the table to get people to all talk. Um, and I think, you know, 1804 is the gun um, to get us to talk. but. Um, I think that what I've heard about the overwhelming number of people that support this, really those numbers are, um, are inaccurate. You start testing those numbers and you start really asking people, now, now do you really want to do this to families? Do you really want to have this kind of impact? Um, we've seen um, those numbers melt away as if it were you know, um, a bright sun on a, uh, on a winter day. Uh, it doesn't take any time. Yeah. Energy <coughs> appears to uh, depend on the normal uh, supply and demand of, of business indicators. What's your perspective on the worldwide supply and demand of natural gas over the next few years? You know, um, people say $100 oil can't be here for long. There's got to be um, a terrorism premium that's in that. Um, and, and certainly, um, you know, that's a part of it. But the, the fact of the matter is that people that live in China and that live in India have, have finally said, you know, we don't like riding bicycles anymore. You know, we don't want to live in cold homes anymore. And 
it's tough to put that genie back in the bottle. I don't see how um, that we're going to see um, oil prices decline dramatically. I think there's great opportunity for Oklahoma and for Oklahomans, and we just need to focus on what it is that we do better than anybody else, and that's find natural gas and oil. Do you think there'll be a connect between the oil and natural gas pricing uh, more than there is now, like you've referred to I, as a I, disconnect? I certainly do. I certainly do. And in <laughs> fact, the other thing that, that I'll just mention real quickly um, is natural gas is a great transportation fuel. I mean, it burns cleaner. It is much cheaper. It is, um, uh, it's domestic. So maybe that can be the subject of something we can talk about in the mm -hmm. future. Well, we got just a few seconds left. What's uh, what's uh, else is Chesapeake working on in the state legislature this year? Any, any bills to draw your attention? We have about thirty seconds. Um, well, uh, we still think there's um, the, the a deep gas incentive uh, is um, is up for renewal this year. Um, that's uh, a controversial thing, but the fact is that um, J. C. Watts said it better than anybody. Capital's a coward. It goes where it's treated the best, and in Texas. There's some, um, there's some very strong incentives for drilling very deep, very costly, very risky wells. And uh, we would look to try to uh, um, focus on, on that again this year, too. Tom Price of Chesapeake Energy, thanks for coming on The Verdict again. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Kent and I'll have a final word right after this. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Glad you're with us. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers wrapping up a show with Tom Price of Chesapeake Energy. Chesapeake is uh, very active, very proactive in all that they do. They're uh, on the forefront of natural gas exploration and production. Uh, but in, by the same token, they're on the forefront uh, of uh, being leaders in the communities where they operate. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, interesting to me that uh, while the nation talks about recession and the people can argue about whether we're in one or not, that's not the point. The point uh, that I want to make is that Oklahoma has a pretty good insulation, if you will, uh, about recession that other states may not have because of this uh, uh, natural gas and oil exploration and production that we have here, and we ought to feel pretty good about that. Tom, speaking about the global demand for energy certainly not decreasing, and, and the fact that as China becomes more industrialized and India becomes more industrialized, sometimes it's hard for us to imagine how many people live there. And if you talk about that many millions of people, you know, uh, starting to drive cars when they didn't drive cars before. I mean, these aren't people that are choosing between a Pontiac and a Ford. They're choosing between driving a bicycle and driving a car. I mean, you, and we're talking tens of millions of people, if not hundreds of millions of people. Yes, and technology is making uh, very low-priced cars uh, available now and uh, on a mass production basis. And it'll be a lot more available to those people, and we shall see the demand uh, mm -hmm. uh, skyrocket. And they're not going to run on air. No. At least no. you wouldn't assume so. 
Uh, Tom Price with Chesapeake Energy, always a great guest. We appreciate him coming on. Another great guest next week, it'll be uh, Brad Lund of uh, Express Sports and uh, Brad's main entity, the Oklahoma City Blazers, um, the, the main tenant now at the Ford Center. So we'll have Brad Lund on next week. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict.